Hello and welcome to day two, lesson two. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at ATC concepts and organization. So for this video, we're going to be looking at three sections, the purpose and organization of air traffic control, slide four, followed by airspace concepts and organization of aerodrome. So the purpose of ATC is to provide separation. And so this paragraph here, talking about preventing collisions between aircraft in the air, on the ground and between obstructions, it's really talking about providing separation between aircraft and between terrain. Also establishing a safe and efficient flow of air traffic, especially at the destination airport. Explain the organization of ATC services. So we've got a diagram here that shows the three types. So at an airport controlled by a control tower, we have a zone that'll extend several miles out from the runway and from the surface to an upper level. Then typically we have an approach departure zone, job of which we'll discuss a little bit later, but it has an upper an upper and a lower level. So it's a 3D volume of airspace above the surface. And then finally, we have the en route sectors for long distance flying at cruise altitude. This diagram is just an alternative picture of the same thing. So here's the tower zone, the approach sector, and then two en route sectors in this case that join the approach sector and adjoin each other. Explain the organization of ATC services aerodrome control. The control tower usually controls aircraft in visual range. They have a control zone, CTR, that they are responsible for and that extends from the surface up to an upper limit. Explain the organization of ATC services approach sector. So the approach or terminal maneuvering area, TMA, wraps above and around an aerodrome CTR with an upper and lower limit. Its purpose for arriving aircraft is to establish a smooth flow well spaced arriving at the runway so that the control tower has a nice even flow of aircraft to deal with and they are not overwhelmed by a sudden large number of arrivals. Area control or en route sector has an upper and a lower limit, sits above the approach departure TMA zones and controls aircraft as they climb to their cruise altitude and then fly over long distances and then when they start their descent. Define airspace organization, FIR. So FIRs or flight information regions are the limits of responsibility for each nation's air navigation service provider. And for its FIR, the ANSP has to provide aeronautical information, air traffic control and management services, navigation aids, and an alerting system so that when aircraft are overdue, they will contact the search and rescue authorities. Define ATS routes. ATS routes are standard routes designed to help facilitate a smooth and efficient flow of air traffic. So on this diagram here, which is based on the aeronautical chart, we can see a standard route. In fact, we can see a number of standard routes, H117, H467, but we've highlighted this one here, H328. And if we go to the air navigation register in the online AIS or AIP, we will find H328 and its various segments listed. So for example, leg two is from Waypoint Creek 
and then goes to another waypoint. So all that information will tie up with this route that is marked on a map. All right, that completes the content for this section. So in your own time, review the contents and then go to the revision questions slides 12 to 17, complete the revision questions, pause this video while you're doing that. And when you're happy with this section, come back and play the video again. Section two of these notes is a short section and it includes some additional concepts on dividing up the airspace into smaller zones. Describe ATM sectorization. So if we're looking at the New Zealand domestic FIR, which is this outer boundary, you can see that the entire FIR is divided into a number of much smaller zones and they can be known as control areas sectors or zones usually during periods of high traffic each zone has its own controller or controllers a radar controller and a radar center with radio and radar coverage of their zone although at night when the traffic is low then the sectors may be amalgamated so the whole country is controlled by maybe two positions. We've already looked at this diagram, but as the notes say, every sector is defined by set boundaries and the shapes of the boundaries can be quite complex. Describe restricted airspace. Certain zones are designated as restricted airspace. Now, it could be a military exercise area, or there could be some other reason why we don't want air aircraft going into that area. So a restricted area is shown here, indicated on an ATM screen. Most ATM systems usually incorporate an area infringement warning system that will alert ATC to aircraft about to enter a restricted area without authorization. Significant points are stored in the air navigation register and may be displayed on charts. And we've got a few examples here. So waypoints, sector boundaries, are these light purple lines, towns, and navigation aids. There's an NDB there, and there's a VOR DME there. We haven't covered those in detail yet. They would be considered significant points. The significant points will also be displayable on the ATM display to ATC, although controllers can choose to switch off certain features if it causes too much clutter. All right, so go back and review the content and then attempt the revision questions on slides 23 to 26. Pause the video until you're happy, then come back and push play again. Okay, so the uh, next section in this lesson is on aerodrome organization. Aerodrome being another word for airport. Explain the obstacle limitation surfaces around aerodromes. Now, these are angled planes around the runway through which no obstruction should penetrate and extend above. This is to ensure the safety of aircraft in approach or during missed approaches or go arounds. As an ATSEP, you must be aware of the limitations 
imposed on any cranes or masts that you may wish to erect on an airfield. If in doubt, liaise with the airport company Explain the terminal trajectories around aerodromes. So the active runway is determined by the wind at the time. Each conc concrete runway is identified by one of two numbers representing the magnetic heading of the approach from either direction. So if this symbol here represents the aerodrome and the line represents the direction of the runway, then you can either approach from this direction or from this direction. The blue elongated CTR boundary is typical in that it extends in line with the approaches. Explain the aerodrome approach and landing categories. So. The category of approach in this column here is determined by the navigation aid available at the airport. The navigation aid determines the decision height. So these numbers here are feet above ground level. So for a non-precision approach, you need to have a, a visibility. We need to be able to see the runway when you're 300 feet above it. If you get below 300 feet and you can't see the runway, then you have to abort the landing. Then we have a figure for RVR minima. Uh, RVR stands for runway visual range, and it's uh, a measure of the horizontal visibility. So being in meters, that's 1.4 to 1.8 kilometers required of forward visibility for a non-precision approach. If we go down through the ILS categories to 3B, then you'll see that the decision height can be zero feet. In other words, an aircraft landing with a CAT 3B ILS can land without seeing the ground until they've touched down, but they do need a forward visibility of 50 meters. this typical aerodrome navigation aids. So as per the table on the previous slide, you can have non-precision approaches. They can be NDB DME or VOR DME approaches. You can have an RNAV RMP approach which uses GPS. And we can have ILS approaches. So in each case, the availability of the navigation aids is important unless it's an RNAV RMP approach. Okay, that completes the content for this last section. So go through, review those notes, perform the revision questions on slides 33 and 37, pause the video while you're doing that, and then press play to finish the video.